Hey, welcome to my living room. Today, my living room is on the way to Santa Maria, California. I'm here with the world-renowned veterinarian, Dr. Miller. It's a privilege to have him in our living room here tonight. He has five topics he's going to share with us today on horse behavior and, and getting horses to overcome fear and anxiety. Can you uh, tell our audience at home these five topics? Uh, I learned that uh, foals are precocial, and that is that their pow most powerful learning periods in their lifetime is in the minutes, hours, and days uh, after birth. Uh, number two, horses do not fear predators. They fear predatory behavior, and predatory behavior takes two forms. One is the stalk. The second phase of predation is the charge. Number three is that horses are an intelligent species, not because they can reason. There's very, very little reasoning power in the horse. They're extremely reactive, and that works for them in the wild, to be highly reactive. But horses learn faster than any other domestic animal. They remember everything. Their memory is infallible. They have the best retention of any domestic animal. And uh, those are good measures of, of intelligence. Horses can be quickly desensitized, however, to any frightening stimulus. The three methods, flooding, constant exposure to the frightening stimulus until the horse ignores it. That usually takes somewhere between 30 and 50 stimuli. And then uh, uh, progressive desensitization. And that's doing it slowly and a little bit at a time. And that's the method I recommend for most people. Not on a newborn foal. You can flood newborn foals. Finally, the last thing, uh, great thing I learned, uh, is that compliance, respect, obedience, uh, response of the horse. Compliance can be obtained in one of two ways. Through intimidation and through trust. Unfortunately, the overwhelmingly most horses have been trained throughout human history through intimidation. It works. There's no question about it. It works. I mean, you could take the classical... Wyoming license plate, the cowboy bucking the horse out. I mean, it, it was fast, it was rough, it was dangerous, but for both horse and rider. You get on them, and the horse bucks out of sheer terror, and then after a while, they say, well, gee, that scared me, but it's still up there, and it hasn't, hasn't done me any harm. Uh, horse quits bucking. It might not quit bucking for the rest of its life, <laughs> The goal, the goal in horsemanship should, should be, for everybody who works with horses, 100% respect and zero fear. It's not an attainable goal. It's impossible to work with horses and get that. You can't get zero fear. But you can minimize the fear by not justifying the fear in the horse's part. And you can maximize the respect. So uh, that's if we keep that in mind, uh, it, uh, in the long haul, it'll make us uh, better horsemen. 100% respect, that's what we work for, and zero fear. Uh, one reason I'm here is because uh, this guy, Dennis Reese, gets as, as close to it as any of the leading clinicians does uh, in attaining that goal. Maximum respect from the horse with a minimum of fear. And remember, you can't get 100%. If you try to train horses and say, never, ever, ever frighten the horse, uh, you're not going to get that horse trained. Uh, but that should still be our goal. Will it work on mules? It not only works on mules, it's essential on mules. Uh, mules, uh, which... Uh, I love mules, yeah. 
uh, I consider them super horses. <laughs> Most horses, as I said, are forgiving creatures. They, throughout history, most of us, us, we humans, most of we humans have handled horses in a crude, aggressive, and improper method. But they get the job done. They, we've turned out cavalry horses. We've turned out show horses. We've turned out uh, cow horses. Uh, and they get the job done, even though the methods we're using are not optimum. Because horses, most horses, are forgiving creatures. And I, as I said earlier, the horse that doesn't forgive, it's the horse's fault. We call it an, it's an outlaw. Whereas in reality, it's our fault. It's, uh, mules are not forgiving. And it's obviously, it comes from the donkey. So there's a lot of sayings in the mule industry that are very true. One is that mules are like horses, but more so. Uh, that mules m must be trained the way horses should be trained. That's so true. Horses, mules must be trained the way horses should be trained. Because most mules were handled with horse methods, they got a very bad reputation. Uh, they were popular and used because they were very strong, heat resistant, uh, disease resistant, uh, practical to use for labor and farm work and packing and draft. But uh, they got a bad reputation. So we hear things as mulish behavior, swears like a mule skinner, uh, mule behavior. And all. If mules are handled properly, the way horses should be tra handled, and that's happening today, uh, they are... I'm generalizing now, but they are even more sociable, more friendly towards human beings than horses are. They attach to humans. They be, become very attached. And uh, I, uh, I like them not just because they test one's horsemanship, but I, a lot of people say, what, what made you switch to mules? Uh, I say, I love horses. I respect mules. Uh, they are remarkable animals. They have uh, remarkable intelligence, which has to come from the donkey uh, and the hybrid vigor. Uh, and the, the f interesting in these hard economic times, the horse population is dropping. Registrations in all breeds are going down, except in the mule industry. M mule, uh, mule registrations are increasing. Mules are increasing in popularity. And in the last eight, seven, eight years, mule shows have gone wild. They're, they're being held all over the country. Where the, there were only two or three mule shows in the United States 25 years ago, but they're everywhere now. Uh, and I've had several people say imprint training made a difference. If you work with those mules at birth uh, and do it correctly, uh, you're going to have a good mule. I agree with that. Uh, I certainly... I had that experience with my own mule. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Join our Nodos Club today for only $20 a month. We will mail you an educational DVD every month. And you get access to over 80 educational DVDs in our online library with titles such as Trailer Loading, Separation Anxiety, Flagging Out, Cowboy Dressage, Learn Flying Lead Changes, Half Pass, Leg Yields, Stops and Turnarounds, Trail Obstacles, Bucking, Rearing, Colt Starting, and so much more. You could purchase all of these DVDs in our online store for $19.95 each, or get access to all of them in our No Dust Club. Get special pricing for Reese Ranch Clinics, 25% off Wrangler Western Wear, 15% off on our horse handling equipment, private access to the members only online discussion forum, help and support from Reese Ranch instructors, and access to our live online classes. You get all of this for just $20 a month. Call now, 800-732-8220, or log on to our website at reisranch.com. Hey horse lovers, you whispered and we heard you. The Dennis Reese Horseman's flag has been improved again. Some of you said your arms were tired from hauling all that heavy fiberglass. 
our new horse flags are lighter weight for easier handling and more flexible for a more refined feel and have a light polycarbon core with a soft rubber exterior. They're still sturdy enough for a firm reinforcement when necessary, but so much more comfortable to carry. They come in four fabulous fashionable colors, ruby, sapphire, onyx, and emerald. Of course, our flags still have an ergonomic grip and hook for safely untangling rope or cinching a difficult horse. Order yours today. 800-732-8220 or order online at reisranch.com. Announcing year-round clinics at Reese Ranch, Pangrove, California. Ride for one day, seven days, 14 days, 24 days, 60 days, or year-round. The next Reese Ranch clinic begins October 18th through October 31st. Ride one day, seven days, or all 14 days. Or take advantage of our weekend specials where two people can ride for the price of one. Call today for cost and information. 800-732-8220 or reisranch.com. Don't miss out. Come and see Dennis Reese live. Call or go online for notice tour free passes for the following locations. Two people can ride for the price of one at all of our notice tour stops. October 5th and 6th, Pengrove, California. October 11th and 12th, Temecula, California. Call today for our two for one special. Two people can ride for the price of one at all of our no dust tour stops. Get your free passes today. Call 800 732 8220 or go online at reisranch.com. Welcome back to Dennis Reese Universal Horsemanship. Mules sh must be trained the way horses should be trained. I've heard that same line and I've, I've said mules demand the way a horse should be developed. And so um, they demand it. And maybe you can share with us why no more than three times, kind of like this get it, got it good principle when you introduce it to a mule, why when you over exceed that with a mule, what the mule typically does, they're stubborn like a mule, and why a horse will tolerate so much injustice to a point then the horse is deemed a rogue. I'm not sure I can answer all of that, but you have to, you know, dealing with uh, zoo animals, whether I'm looking at the nutrition or uh, behavior or anything else, I go back to what nature designed. Uh, so, for example, I preach to the owners of the big cats. Uh, in the wild, the big cats don't eat meat. They eat other animals, including the blood and the bone where all the calcium comes from. So I encourage them not to feed straight meat uh, because in the wild they don't eat straight meat. They eat the whole animal. The cat eats the whole mouse. Uh, so I always look at what nature intended. The horse evolves on open prairie, uh, open grassland, uh, surrounded by hungry cats and hungry dogs, saber-toothed tigers, uh, the, the, uh, cave, the cave lion, which was stood a foot taller than the African lion, uh, a lot of species that are extinct now. The horse survived. And uh, it evolved a method of defense, which is f flight, instant flight. You see something, hear something, smell something, feel something that you don't understand, run away. And then when you've gone flight distance, which for each predator, for each prey animal, is slightly farther than its primary predator can run. So horses in the wild, the zebras, they'll run just slightly farther than, than a lion can charge and then turn around, what's that? What was that? Uh, and, and you can see how that evolved. The horse that stopped running too soon got eaten. And the one that ran too far ran into another pride of lions. So that, that flightiness of the horse, you know, that's what made the horse useful to us is its flightiness, whether it's on the racetrack or uh, after a cow or into the collar. 
that flightiness is why the horse is so useful to us, but it's also why we have a lot of problems with horses and their behavior is that flightiness. Now, the donkey evolved in steep, arid, rocky terrain where blind flight, what the horse does, could be fatal. So if, if the wild donkey uh, senses something, sees something, hears something, it doesn't immediately respond with flight like the horse does. Instead, it analyzes. And it says, I see something dangerous down there, but I'm safe up here. So I'm going to stay here, and nothing's going to make me move. And that's where the reputation for stubbornness comes from. And, of course, this is reflected in, in the hybrid offspring, the mule. So when, when the donkey senses danger, it does one of several things. It will either run like a horse or it will stand still and nothing can make it move. That's not horse-like. That's donkey-like. Or it will attack. Uh, but that's the difference between mules. They're not, that because of the donkey in them, they're not a prime. And some of them inherit more physically, mentally, behavior-wise, physiologically. Some of them are more donkey-like and some are more horse-like. Today's mule, what we're raising today, we want horse-like. We want the hybrid vigor, but we want them to look as much like a long-eared horse. So you're, we're seeing beautiful mules nowadays because uh, they're breeding top mares now. If you think back 40 years ago when we first started going to Bishop Mule Days, uh, if you see a good-looking one out in the arena, you'd say, hey, look at that one second from the right. That's a good-looking mule. Now it's the other way around. You say, look, that's a funny-looking mule <laughs> because they're mostly good-looking because of the good mares that they're uh, coming out of. So, and I consider it... Uh, genetic roulette. You don't know what you're going to get. Uh, if it comes out too donkey-like, it's probably best suited for a, a pack animal. If it comes out very horse-like, uh, you've got a, a English or Western mule. You've traveled the world in seminars. You're basically on the road almost 24-7. You travel more than I do, but you travel abroad. Um, where do you feel you've made the biggest impact on giving this message I think the most dramatic change in horsemanship that I've seen has been on the islands of Hawaii. Really? A ranch in Argentina with uh, 2,000 head of horses and, and the owner's wife. That's significant. It was the wife that said to me, we've never done it that way, but we're going to try a few horses next year. Then the next year she writes a letter. She says, those are yearlings are looking good. We'll try a few more this year. Then the next year I get a letter and say, we'll never do it the old way again. <laughs> that, now that, it, it, that hasn't spread all over Argentina, but it's, it's made some inroads. The other was Poland. We went in, 19, in 2009. We, I went to Poland, <laughs> and uh, they wanted imprint training, but I, I gave them the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, they wanted to be, uh, they, it was too late in the year for a foal. So they, I said, uh, we can use a goat. I can show you what using a goat, uh, or even if it's big enough, a, uh, a toy horse. Well, they brought a toy unicorn. <laughs> Pink, and <purple. laughs> Pink and purple, the size of a real foal. And uh, I had them, I, you know, show all the things I do with the foal, with this uh, unicorn. She thought that was very funny, but, but it, it worked fine. Wait, I, where have you been? Well, we've been hitting really hard this last 10 years, primarily just in the United States, but Deborah and I, we would go out for nine months straight across the country. And so we, we've been traveling really, really hard in, you know, in the United States. But, you know, we've been over to, uh, actually, we went to Brazil with you a few, a few years ago. We've been to New Zealand, to Australia. Um, we're looking forward to uh, traveling again, but believe it or not, with the Internet, we have students now online that are giving us tapes from the U.K., from Australia, from New Zealand. 
And so we have like a little interna international uh, cyberspace uh, travel that you're going through. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been a very fun journey, uh, sharing a message that is so simple that uh, it's hard to believe that, well, I mean, a cowboy has figured it out, you know, but we just got invited back to Brazil, yeah, so yeah, that's, we're going to go to Brazil in May 2000. Well, we you know we we were in Brazil with you, and we we saw some beautiful, beautiful countryside, some really beautiful, you know, horses. Um, we became uh, fans of the Andalusians down there, and now Deborah has an Andalusian. Um, the Andalusians or the Lusitanos? Well, it, primarily the Lusitanos are there, but we did get a, we did we did get an Andalusian, but I think there's only a border separating them, and maybe some minute. Uh, facial features that you're going to separate them, but uh, we became a fan of the Baroque style horse from our trip down there. And uh, there's, uh, don't, don't, don't tell me they aren't cow horses because they are, they're cow horses. But you know, it's nice to see this message getting out. And I've been doing this close to 30 years now when there was only a couple of us out there doing it. And now there's a lot of people doing this and it's only getting better. But uh, it was just been a privilege having you come to our seminar here in Santa Maria I, I was here in Santa Maria 40 years ago at a high school rodeo, and we're back here again. It's the first seminar I've actually taught down here. It's a uh, beautiful place in California. You only you live, you live four hours one way, I live four hours the other way, but this is a pleasure catching up with you. And Debbie got a chance to ride. We're going to ride again this afternoon. But hey, guys, get a chance to check out Dr. Miller. Go online. Wealth and knowledge, wealth information. It's just uh, drmiller.com or... Uh, robertmmiller.com. Hey, check it out. You got all the books and tapes and maybe you can get a go and get an invitation out and have them speak to one of your clubs. Hey, it's been a pleasure having us in the living room. Don't see the future. We'll see you in the pasture. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Give Dr. Miller a big hand here, guys. Join our Notos Club today for only $20 a month. We will mail you an educational DVD every month. And you get access to over 80 educational DVDs in our online library with titles such as Trailer Loading, Separation Anxiety, Flagging Out, Cowboy Dressage, Learn Flying Lead Changes, Half Pass, Leg Yields, Stops and Turnarounds, Trail Obstacles, Bucking, Rearing, Colt Starting, and so much more. You could purchase all of these DVDs in our online store for $19.95 each or get access to all of them in our No Dust Club. Get special pricing for Reese Ranch Clinics. 25% off Wrangler Western Wear. 15% off on our horse handling equipment. Private access to the members only online discussion forum. Help and support from Reese Ranch instructors. And access to our live online classes. You get all of this for just $20 a month. Call now. 800-732-8220 or log on to our website at reisranch.com. Hey horse lovers, you whispered and we heard you. The Dennis Reese Horseman's flag has been improved again. Some of you said your arms were tired from hauling all that heavy fiberglass. Our new horse flags are lighter weight for easier handling and more flexible for a more refined feel and have a light polycarbon core with a soft rubber exterior. They're still sturdy enough for a firm reinforcement when necessary, but so much more comfortable to carry. They come in four fabulous fashionable colors, ruby, sapphire, onyx, and emerald. Of course, our flags still have an ergonomic grip and hook for safely untangling rope or cinching a difficult horse. Order yours today. 800-732-8220 or order online at reisranch.com. Announcing year-round clinics at Reese Ranch, Pengrove, California. Ride for one day, seven days, 14 days, 24 days, 60 days, or year-round. The next Reese Ranch clinic begins October 18th through October 31st. Ride one day, seven days, or all 14 days. Or take advantage of our weekend specials where two people can ride for the price of one. Call today for cost and information. 800-732-8220 or reisranch.com Don't miss out. 
Come and see Dennis Reese live. Call or go online for notice tour free passes for the following locations. October 5th and 6th, Pengrove, California. October 11th and 12th, Temecula, California. Call today for our two for one special. Two people can ride for the price of one at all of our no dust tour stops. Get your free passes today. Call 800-732-8220 or go online at reisranch.com. Hi, this is Deborah Reese and we feed all of our horses Elk Grove Milling Stable Mix Feed. What makes Stable Mix the right choice? There is no corn or molasses and it is a complete feed that's weed certified free. It includes all the necessary daily vitamins and minerals and has bran for the coat and biotin for the hoof. For more information, go to elkgrovemilling.com. <laughs> 